Hello and welcome. Uh, with this video, we're doing an application of the SOLO model. Uh, and specifically, we're going to look at the effect of an increase in technology growth. Uh, the SOLO model version we're working with is the one with labor augmenting technology as well as population growth already added into it. Um, so the plan of attack on this is uh, we're going to look at things through the SOLO diagram. Uh, we're going to see how a shift in population growth affects things through the SOLO diagram. And then after that, I'll draw a time series for the key variables uh, given this higher level of technology growth. Um, and to just be clear, this is a video among many covering the SOLO model. Uh, so check out the video description if you want more help. And then also the specific type of technology growth we're dealing with in this particular model is labor augmenting technology growth. Not to be confused with capital augmenting technology growth or um, I think it's called neutral technology growth where it's like it's affecting total factor productivity. So uh, this is the one typically taught in intermediate macro courses, labor augmenting technology. Um, yep, so let's get started. So uh, turning toward the solo diagram as we have here, what happens if um, technology growth increases? Well, uh, technology growth is, is marked by G, that's the growth rate of labor augmenting technology, um, N's population, D's uh, depreciation. So just, you know, purely mathematically looking at the, the little signs and numbers and lines and stuff, if G goes up, then the slope of this blue line shifts up. Uh, which is going to push the steady state level of capital per effective worker down this way. Um, so looking at that uh, dynamically, uh, here's a, something from Wolfram Alpha, which is like a demonstration of the SOMA model that's free. So if we increase the technology growth rate G, uh, what does that do? That shifts up that break-even investment line, that yellow line below here, pushing down the steady state level of capital per effective worker. So uh, if we I'm going to assume that we start off at the steady state level of capital per effective worker. And if we increase the slope of that blue line, you're going to have a new steady state level down here. So if you want to call this like K hat star sub one, you'd have a new lower level K hat star sub two somewhere down here, right? Um, so yeah, that's the first thing is you have a new steady state level of capital per effective worker. But how does everything else change? Um, well, So we're getting, here's our capital perfective worker levels, and we can see that if uh, G is increased, that's going to have a negative level effect. Uh, you know, it, as, as we saw in the solo diagram, it uh, reduces the steady state level of capital perfective worker. So output perfective worker, right, is um, just a function of capital perfective worker. So the increase in the growth rate of technology is going to decrease that output perfective worker. Um, also keep in mind that that shift is not going to be instantaneous. Even though the new steady state change is instantaneous, capital per effective worker um, changes through time defined by that capital accumulation equation, by that law of motion of capital equation. So it's something that evolves slowly, step by step through time, depending on how much investment is being shifted into, uh, you know, so an investment is what increases the capital stock. So the change in, in capital per effective worker kind of depends on how much uh, investment's changing or how much those other things are changing. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a slow, gradual shift. So uh, if you were to look at a time series, so time's on the horizontal axis, and we got capital per effective worker here, K hat, and output per effective worker, um, Y hat here. So remember I told you that we were assuming that we we're at that initial level of K star, K hat star, um, up here, and then we have, right at this dotted line, we have the increase in the technology growth rate. So that shifts down the capital per effective worker level, steady state, uh, to this new level here. But like I said, the transition dynamics is a slow process because that uh, how capital per effective worker changes is defined, is determined by that law of motion of capital. And it's a gradual process. Uh, initially, you have a very large quick drop in capital per effective worker. Um, uh, but as the current level of capital per effective worker approaches the new steady state, um, the change is smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's like an asymptotic approach. Um, why does it look like that? Well, if we look at the diagram, uh, suppose this is the steady state level, the current steady state level, this K star here. Um, but suppose we are at a capital level, like a, cap a level of capital effect worker way, way over here. Um, if we're at that level, you can see this blue line's above the red line. This blue line's the break-even investment line. That's how much uh, capital per effective worker needs to be produced each period in order to keep the capital per effective worker constant. 
right? Capital per effective worker gets increased by investment, and it gets decreased by these three things, the growth rate of technology, uh, growth rate of population, and depreciation. So in order to keep capital per effective worker constant, some new capital per effective worker, new capital needs to be produced to take into account these growth rates. Um, so if we're starting off at a level way over here, since capital per effective worker is significantly larger than current investment per effective worker, the difference between the two is how capital per effective worker is going to decrease. So you can see there's a big difference between the two, and so you're going to get a big decrease in capital per effective worker. It's going to put us in the next period at a point somewhere over here. So once again, the break-even investment line is above current investment per effective worker. And so we're definitely going to get a decrease in that the value of k-hat. But the decrease isn't as big. You know, the difference isn't as big as the last periods. So we're going to get a small decrease in a smaller decrease in capital per effective worker, putting us somewhere, say, over here. Once again, the blue break-even investment line is above the investment per effective worker line. And so we're definitely going to get a decrease, but it's smaller. So you're going to see, like, uh, initially you get these big increases, sorry, these big decreases. And then as the current capital per effective worker stock approaches the steady state, um, you know, you get smaller and smaller and smaller uh, changes until we eventually reach um, that new steady state. Uh, and then output per effective worker is just a function of capital per effective worker. Uh, you also might uh, remember or not have perfectly clear yet, why were we focusing on capital per effective worker? That's a great question, and I'm glad you asked, and I'll try to explain right now. Okay, so when we're looking at capital per worker levels, right, so not per effective worker, the growth rate of those things is determined by the growth rate of technology. Right, so they are not in a steady state. If there's a growth rate of technology, you know, if the summer is non-zero, then these things are going to be evolving through time, which is not a steady state. It's like a balanced growth path or something along those lines. In order to get a steady state, we need to think about capital per effective worker, right? So you need to think about the capital stock divided by the number of effective workers. Where A is technology, it's like a stock that increases, and it, A increases at rate G. Uh, and L is the labor supply, and the labor supply increases at rate N. Um, we, in order to keep capital per effective worker constant, if A and L are increasing, we need to constantly be adding new capital to that capital stock, right? Because we need to add additional capital to take into account the fact that there's new workers, and we need to take it, add capital to the capital stock uh, in order to take into account that there are more effective workers. Uh, where technology means that uh, labor augmenting technology means that an individual worker is able to act as if there are more and more workers. Um, in order to keep things like working with our particular production function, that means with te increases technology, uh, we also need to um, give those new effective workers uh, effective in the sense that there's new technology to make them more productive. We need to give them additional capital as well. So that means if the growth rate of A increases, uh, we need to increase uh, how much we increase the growth rate of capital, right? So these are in steady state levels, um, but capital per worker are growing at rate G. So uh, when we look at the solo diagram with technology growth and population growth, we're really working to find out um, the steady state level of capital per effective worker. So when we think about, well, what is capital per worker and output per worker, um, keep in mind that it grows at this rate G. So if you were to look at a time series for the per worker levels, you get something like this. So once again, before this, this little dotted line right there is when we're at that initial steady state. And then right at the dotted line, I increase the growth rate of technology. Uh, and you can see this was our old growth line, and then this is our new growth line. So capital per worker is growing at a faster rate. Output per worker is, uh, based, is just a function of capital per worker, so it too is growing at that new faster rate. This, this rate right here is defined by the growth rate of technology, so that rate G. Uh, and then shifting down here, so consumption is kind of our proxy for welfare, and we can see that given the new higher level of output per worker, um, these people are at a, sorry, this, this new higher level of technology growth. Um, these people are now better off. Consumption per worker is, is growing faster. Um, and then aggregate levels, 
right? So the labor force is just defined by the growth rate of population, so that's not too interesting. Um, but in terms of the capital stock and overall aggregate output, the growth rate of those two things are set by the technology growth and population growth. So if technology growth increases, then this is going to increase, which we see right here. So these are our aggregate levels. You got output right here growing at a new faster level, and you got capital here growing at a new faster level. Uh, and then intuitively, what does that mean? Well, I mean, intuitively, this is, makes pretty clear sense. Um, the reason why we, we focus on capital per effective worker is that allows us to find and calculate an actual steady state, right? So that's that's how we, we kind of like benchmark our equation, right? So our little k-hat star is this. Um, but the thing we kind of care about is, you know, output per worker or consumption per worker. Those are our, our proxies for welfare. Uh, and output per worker and consumption per worker uh, grow with technology, right? Because output per worker is just output per effective worker times the growth rate of technology. So we have a steady state for this with the new higher, uh, with the new, um, um, what am I trying to say? With the new uh, um, higher growth rate of technology, um, but it's growing at this faster rate. So that's cool. Um, and then, yeah, similar story with capital and output, aggregate output. Uh, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you did find it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and thanks for having a good day. Bye.